taking a look at a couple of economics applications of the partial derivative. So consider the Cobb-Douglas production function. And it's given by Q of K, which is the capital, L is the labor, and it's equal to twice k to the 3 halves, l to the 1 half. Well, when k is equal to 100, l is equal to 25, q of 100, 25, is going to be equal to 2 times 100 to the 3 halves, which will be 10 to the 3rd. times 25 to the 1 half, which will be 5, which is 10,000. The partial derivatives of this function are dq, d capital, of kl is equal to, here we let l remain constant and we take a derivative with respect to k and we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent and bring out a 3 halves so we get 3 since we have 3 halves times 2 k to the 1 half l to the 1 half similarly dq over dl of k l is equal to k to the 3 halves, l to the minus 1 half. Same idea. And this guy is going to be called the marginal product of capital. So this function is the marginal product of capital. That's our interpretation of that function. This one we'll call the marginal product of labor. And these represent the steepness of the function in the direction of k and l. So if we fix so if we fix L and increase K by some marginal quantity by delta K, uh, we have the approximation Q of say our numbers were one hundred plus some delta k, 25. It's just like in one, one, one dimensional calculus, we say that it's going to be the point, the evaluation of that point plus the partial evaluated at that point times delta k. And what is this equal to? We computed this, this is 10,000. And if we compute, if we plug in 125 into this friendly fellow, we get 3 times 10 times 5, which is ultimately going to give us 150 delta k. So now if, if k is equal to 1, then this is equal to 10,000, this should be 150, 150. And the actual value, you can compute the actual value, so 101, 25, right, so delta k 
delta k is equal to 1. Q of 101, 25. That's actually equal to 10,150.374 and a bunch of other smaller things. So that's actually a very good approximation as long as delta k was actually small. Also at this point, so, so we see that in this situation, if we increase the capital by one unit, roughly we're going to have a 150 unit increase in our production. Uh, but what if, we, uh, what if we increase L? Well, we'd, we'd use the same type of formula and we'd have a, a change in that. So now let's consider the a, a two variable situation or a three variable situation but now I'm gonna say the uh, the quantity purchased for a uh, a good good one is going to be dependent upon uh, the price of the good the price of another good good two and the income that's available and let's say that that's equal to p1 to the negative one half p2 to the one half I to the one fourth. Now we want to describe the elasticity of this good, the uh, the the consumption of this good with respect to the price, um, and we could use a partial derivative, and that kind of quantifies how Q one would be changing as we change P one. But the thing is these units could be in millions of dollars or fifties of cents. That's it. And so we want something that's a little more invariant. So in order to measure elasticity, we're going to say that E1 is going to be the percent change in demand. Divided by the percent change in P1. So that's equal to 100% times delta Q1 over Q1. So that's the percentage of change of the demand times 100 times or divided by 100 times the change in P1 over P1. And this will free us from the units that we had to worry about. And if we cancel things out and put everything in the right place, we end up with P1 over Q1, delta Q1 over delta P1. Now, delta Q1, so we know what P1 and Q1 might be, and we want to figure out what this is. Delta Q1, delta P1, well that's equal to Q of P1 Q1 of, we'll, we'll ignore the other variables right now, plus delta P1. Say, well, let's, let's go ahead and include them. I minus Q of P1, P2, I, all over delta P1. But this just looks like the definition of the derivative, only maybe say delta, delta P1 is not actually zero but just some small number and so what we're gonna actually gonna say is well this is just gonna be dq1 over dp1 and we're gonna we're gonna just use that as our measure of elasticity so ultimately our elasticity looks like this if we if we plug in this approximation here we're gonna have p1 in the numerator dq1 over dp1 of p1 p2 i all divided by q1 of p1 p2 i so now what happens when we take the derivative of q1 with respect to p1 what was that function so we're going to have P1, and then what do we get here? 
well, remember, we've got P1 to the negative 1 half, so we'll get a negative 1 half out. Negative 1 half out. And now we have P to the negative 3 halves. P1. P2 is still to the 1 half because it was assumed constant. And I to the 1 quarter. Divide by P1 to the negative 1 half. P2 to the 1 half. I to the 4th. which is equal to, well, I've got P1 sitting here, so when I multiply P1 times P1 to the negative 3 halves, I get P to the negative 1 half. And let me draw out this negative 1 half. So I get negative 1 half times in the numerator, P1 to the negative 1 half, P2 to the 1 half, I to the 1 fourth, all divided by P1 to the negative 1 half, P2 to the 1 half, I to the 1 fourth, which ultimately equals negative one half. So my elasticity for this good with respect to its price is negative one half. And since it's between negative one and zero, I say that's inelastic. If, if it were between negative infinity and negative one, we would say it's elastic. Right? That is a very, that is, it would indicate that there's a very big change in the demand based upon the price. Otherwise, we call it inelastic. That's kind of an arbitrary decision, but it works in the long run. That's useful. Well, we can also compute the cross price elasticity. So the cross price price elasticity. It's derived in kind of a similar way. So we have el elasticity of good 1 with respect to the price of good 2 is equal to P2 DQ DP2 of P1 P2 I all over Q1 of P1, P2, I. And if you work out what the, what that means, you should get one half. Now if EQ2, P1, was also positive, so this number is positive, this number is positive, we would say these goods are substitutes. That is if the price in one of them goes up then I want to get the other one. And if it goes down then I care less about getting the other one. If EQ2 P1 was negative uh, these are complements. That is, I want to buy them together. I want to be able to get both at the same time. 